Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. Today we're going to talk about overscan and lens distortion in Blender. Let's get started. Okay, so I've got a shot here with some cubes just kind of spread out in 3D space and I'm looking through a camera. And what I'm going to do is show you how to set this up. When you're looking through your camera, if you come up here, you can activate the compositor. We can turn this on to camera and this will show us whatever's going on in our compositor in our viewport. Then we come to the compositor tab and you click use nodes. So as you can see at the beginning, there's nothing that's really happening here. This is just, you know, straight up normal stuff. But if we come in here, we could do like an RGB uh, curves, for example. Uh, so RGB curves, drop this in here. And as I change this, you're going to see the effect in real time in the viewport. The problem comes when you use something like the lens distortion node. And let's say, you know, this particular camera would have a little bit of lens distortion. Now, if I turn up distortion, you can see it starts to distort the image and it creates that curvature that you get from the lens, but you're getting this black bar along the side and then even worse, this gray bit here as you increase that effect. And we wanna be able to go, okay, Blender, can you render everything that you're bringing into this shot so we can have uh, our rendered image go all the way to the edge of frame? But there's no way to really do that. We can't come over here to our format and change the resolution up to like 150 or something. You can see it has no effect here visually. Um, and if I want to work in the viewport and see what the lens distortion might feel like on like a real camera lens, there's just no way to really do it. So what I'm going to show you is how to get around this issue and a cool little hack that can give you the overscan that you want. In the lens distortion node, we've got this fit option. You can see what it's doing is it scales up the image so that you no longer have those black bars. But this is a problem because it's not really accurate to the lens. So you can see we're on a 50 millimeter lens. We have a 36 millimeter sensor size, which is the film back of our camera. And these two things factor, create the look basically, they determine how close we feel we are to things and how big they are in the frame, how much um, you know uh, perspective we have or how orthographic it feels. All those things are being contributed to by these two values, right? And fit really doesn't really doesn't give us the look. We want to keep the look like this. We want it to feel like this, want the cube to stay the same size in the center of frame, have the same kind of perspective lines, everything, but we just want to be able to render outside of the edge of frame. So what we need to do is we need to create more image. So the first step in getting this to work is we need to create the scale node. So I'm going to come over here, I'm going to grab the scale node and I'll drop this here. At one to one set to relative, it's not going to do anything. So we need to scale it up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale it up until I'm getting the same effect basically is fit, right? And the reason why we're using the scale node is because we want to know what the numbers are that we need in order to get this thing to fit, right? So let's come over here. Let's grab these and I'll just drag up. I'll hold down shift to slow down the value. And it looks like right about 1.2 seems pretty good. Scaling this to 1.2 is pretty much the same as using fit, right? Just have a look at this cube down here. You can see where it's uh, being cut off by. And if I turn on fit, kind of you know to get a little bit of the corner of it we turn this one back on it's the same kind of thing so but now we know that in order to get this to fit with this lens distortion level we need to scale the image by 1.2 so that's going to take the image and scale it up by 1.2 so what we can do in order to preserve the the focal length the field of view and the focal length of our lens is to actually change the film back of our camera by this same ratio so come over here to the sensor and where it says sensor, I've got mine set to auto at the moment. You could do this horizontal, vertical, however you want. But if I get rid of the millimeter and I just type in multiply and I go 1.2 and I hit enter there, it's going to change my sensor by that same scale that we've scaled up. And you can see what happens is the visual effect is everything shrinks. So if I just drag this around, you can see that the sensor size changes basically the scale of our, of our frame. All right, so let's start to brute force test this a little bit. So I'm going to take my camera and I'm going to drop my f-stop. Right now it's set to 1. I'm going to go to point 0.1. So I really start getting some depth of field blur here. I might even go further than that. Uh, 0.05, let's say, right? And I've got one object here, this sphere, that has some uh, bright um, like emissive shader on it. So I get some really sharp bokeh on that so I can see what that feels like. And I'm just looking at how everything is distorted and how the image feels, right? So what we're going to do is I'm going to render this frame. So I'm going to go view viewport render image, and this will render what my viewport sees. This is a good little tip, by the way, is using the viewport render, uh, it's different from using the render render image. This will actually use the um, like the EV pipeline. So if I render this, you'll see I don't get uh, the background, and that's because this um, 
it automatically will use the scene world whenever you do the normal render image. But if I use view render image from the viewport, then it's going to render whatever my viewport is seeing. So if you ever get a different result from normal rendering, this is what you want to use to, to get the render you want. Okay, so we've got this saved into slot three. So I'm going to go to slot two by hitting two on my keyboard here, and this will give me a fresh render slot. So now we can render, it'll save it to this slot, and then we can compare by hitting the number three on my keyboard, number two on my keyboard, we can look at these side by side. So let's now have a look at what happens when we kind of revert this change. So let's get rid of the scale. I'm going to mute that, and I'm going to divide by 1.2, right, to put the film back, back to what it was, which is 36. And let's render this. So view, render image. So there we go, and I'm going to put this into slot two. So now let's compare. So if we go between three and two, you can see that the cube is pretty much staying the same size. There is a slight difference, very slight, but overall it's pretty much the same. What we are getting that is different is the distortion is more pronounced in this first one than it is in the second. So we will lose a little bit of that distortion, but Overall, the depth of field, the bokeh, everything is staying relatively the same. It's just we've got the edges of our frame rendered now. So one thing that this approach does change is it will slightly change the way your f-stop creates depth of field. So it'll create a little bit of a blurrier image in some places. So um, it's really hard to see at a scale of like 1.2. We're just changing it a tiny bit. Um, and typically speaking, changing it enough just to get the overscan, it's not going to really affect our image. Again, this is a very extreme f-stop. This is like 0.05. So it's a very, very intense f-stop. We don't normally have them like that. So anyways, so this is a great little effect to use to get the overscan that you need to really be able to dial in uh, lens distortion effects. And now what we can do is really um, have fun with this. I'll come back. I'll set this again. So multiplied by 1.2. So there we go. Now we're back to what a 50 millimeter should feel like on a 36 millimeter film back, right? You just have to remember this has been adjusted from the actual film back that we started with in order to get this effect to work. Now we can add some dispersion now, which is really fun. That splits the R, G, and B values along the edge as it gets to the uh, distorted side. And now if I lock my camera to view, you can see I can look around and that distortion just carries along. And I've got this really nice fisheye lens. And so now we're getting this nice distortion lines. You can see that our cube doesn't have straight lines. It's got slightly curved sides, which without this lens distortion, you can see it doesn't do this. This is what it normally would look like, but it's quite a different look when you add that lens distortion in. And it adds a lot of realism. It can do a lot for really enhancing the feel and flow of your shots. Now, if you wanna support this channel, you can join on Patreon and get the full uncut version of this tutorial where I go into even more detail about the compositor nodes and what I like to have as my ideal setup. Likewise, you can get that on Patreon if you join at any level over there. Or you can get this project file as well if you join on Patreon at the second tier and up. So check that out. I roll out project files every month. Thanks to everybody who supports the channel already. I really appreciate all of you. I'll catch you in the next tutorial. Until then, have a fantastic week. See ya.